Hello. Welcome to a brand new medical surgical nursing lesson. My name is Jesse Wheatley and I'll be facilitating this lesson. Please be sure that you have your notebook ready to take notes and you have your textbook available for reference. I encourage you to highlight any key points that remain unclear and to be sure to email me for any questions. This lesson covers the RN nursing care for chronic airflow limitation, asthma, COPD, cystic fibrosis, pulmonary arterial hypertension, interstitial and other occupational lung diseases, and lung carcinoma. Lower airway disorders affect gas exchange, they affect oxygenation, and tissue perfusion. Many problems are chronic and progressive and require a change in a patient's lifestyle. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to realize the many similarities between the disorders presented in this lesson, especially in regard to the pathophysiology, the clinical manifestations, and findings from diagnostic tests. The RN should be able to understand that disorders affecting breathing are not only life-threatening, but cause a lot of anxiety and fear in our patients. The RN should know the importance of holistic patient care, clinical decision making, and problem solving that is foundational to patient care for respiratory patients. You should use, incur use assessment information to identify people at increased risk for genetic diseases that affect the respiratory system, and you should encourage all people who are expected to have been exposed to inhalation irritants in the workplace or home to use appropriate protection. Chronic airway limitations a group, is a group of lung diseases that include asthma, chronic bronchitis, pulmonary emphysema. When we talk about chronic bronchi bronchitis and pulmonary, pulmonary emphysema, we're talking about COPD, which presents with bronchospasms and dyspnea, irreversible tissue damage, and gets worse over time and leads to respiratory failure. Let's talk about asthma. Asthma is an intermittent disease with reversible airflow obstruction and wheezing affecting only the airways in two ways. Let's look at our picture. We have our picture here and we have normal airway and we have an asthmatic airway at rest. An asthmatic airway is going to have inflammation and it's also going to have increased airway responsiveness that causes bronchospasms or hyper responsiveness. Asthma can proceed into an asthmatic attack where you can see we have an asthmatic airway during an attack and it can proceed to status asthmaticus. Status asthmaticus is a severe life-threatening acute episode of airway obstruction that intensifies once it begins and often it does not respond to common therapy. It requires an immediate treatment and it causes over 5,000 deaths every year. Here's another graphic of an inflamed bronchi bronchial tube of an asthmatic versus a normal bronchial. Allergens in asthma bind to a specific antibody molecule, IgE, located in mast cells and basophils. These are cells are filled with chemicals. We have histamine, leukotrienes, interleukin-4s, and the release of chemicals triggers more white blood cell count response and an inflammatory response. We will now talk about COPD, chronic obstru obstructive pulmonary disease. Chronic bronchitis is an inflammation of the bronchi and bronchioles caused by chronic exposure to irritants, especially tobacco smoke. It triggers inflammation and vasodilation, congestion, mucosal edema, and bronchospasms. It kind of looks like as in asthma attack, the irritant triggers inflammation 
causing all kinds of things, but this is more chronic. Chronic inflammation increases in number and size of mucus glands, bronchial walls thicken, small airways become blocked, and large airways become narrow, and PaO2 decreases, PCO2 de increases. Emphysema, on the other hand, pulmonary emphysema, there are two major changes happening in pulmonary emphysema. We have loss of lung elasticity and we have hyperinflation of the lungs. And together, these uh, diseases are classified as COPD. Here is a close-up of emphysema that I've included with your notes. You can see the mucus in the bronchioles in large alveoli, fewer capillaries, compared to the normal bronchioles we have here. The emphysema bronchioles, um, you can see the damage there. And there's another picture that shows emphysema. Uh, we have compressed, uh, compressed ducts and we have collapsed alveoli sacs, and we have uh, damage that you can see in that. Uh, your notes go into the pathophysiology of how this happens. This will be review information for you that I would like for you to look at. And also your notes go through clinical manifestations of um, COPD that I would like for you to brush up on and make sure that you still remember those. Also lab diagnostic tests are in there. Remember that with RN care and management, it's going to be teaching, teaching, teaching. Your notes have a whole long section on making sure that you review the teaching that you have to do for this condition. Cystic fibrosis is an incurable autosomal recessive genetic disease that affects many organs and impairs the pulmonary function of our patients. Although it's present at birth, almost half the people with cystic fibrosis are adults. Some adults are diagnosed with CF until, until they, uh, they're not diagnosed with CF until they have had a child. Priority nursing interventions for cystic fibrosis is teaching about drug therapy, infection prevention, pulmonary hygiene, and nutrition, and vitamin supplementation. We want to protect the patient with cystic fibrosis from hospital-acquired illnesses. And these patients, uh, surgical, they may have uh, other problems that occur with patients over time are like GERD, osteoporosis, and sensory neuro hearing losses. Surgical management includes um, a lung or a pancre pancreatic tr transplant. Primary pulmonary arterial hypertension, also known as idiopathic pulmonary hypertension, occurs in the absence of other lung diseases, and it is, has an unknown cause or an unknown, or, even though we know exposure to some drugs increases the risk. Most of the patients that present with this disorder have had some genetic mutation. Dyspnea and fatigue are early symptoms in an otherwise healthy adult, and they may have chest pain. Non-surgical interventions are um, geared at reducing pulmonary pressure and uh, making sure that the patient doesn't develop complications. Surgical management involves uh, lung trans transplant. We may do a single lung or a whole lung transplantation. Your textbook goes in more details about this disorder. Interstitial pulmonary diseases contain a variety of lung disorders that are called fibrotic lung diseases that have some features in common. All of them affect the alveoli, the blood vessels, and they also support affect the tissue surrounding the lungs. And they are all restrictive and they prevent good expansion and recoil for gas exchange. Over time, the lung tissues thicken and there is a reduction in gas exchange. Your textbook mentions sarcoidosis, which is a granul granulomatous disorder of unknown cause that may affect any organ in the body. But the granulotus growth it, are most often found in the lungs as lumps. Pulmonary sarcoidosis involves autoimmune responses in which a normally protective T 
lymphocyte increase causes tissue there's damage lung damages lung tissue sarcoidosis is staged in both on the basis of x-rays and find and findings and is treated with corticosteroids. This is a picture of somebody with complications. They're going to have brain complications, eye complications, enlarged lymph nodes, heart complications, but there's going to be lumps in the lungs that are going to be diagnostic and then other problems. Idiopathic Pulmonary fibrosis is a common, highly lethal, restrictive lung disease. It typically affects patients that have had a history of cigarette smoking, chronic exposure to irritants. Most of the patients have progressive disease with few remission periods. It often results in death in less than five years after the diagnosis. The goal of therapy in these patients is to slow the progression of the fibrotic process and to manage the dyspnea in the patient. Occupational lung diseases is a group of respiratory disorders that are caused by exposure to occupational or environmental fumes, dust, vapors, gases, bacteria, or fungi, or any allergens. Patients may have acute reversible effects or may develop chronic lung disease from these exposures. Many occupational diseases have an onset of symptoms long after the exposure has been um, presented. You want to teach uh, the importance of prevention using respirators if they work in a place that rec that needs them. You want to uh, promote adequate ventilation when working in potentially harmful environments. You want to teach patients who can come into contact with inhaled irritants to make sure that they have um, a mask on uh, to avoid these. And you want to teach anybody who smokes that smoking increases the risk for developing pulmonary problems. This is a picture of healthy tissue. And then we have a picture of a healthy tissue of a 90 year old school teacher. And then you have a picture of a progressive masses fibrosis in a 40 year old minor's lungs. Bronchiolitis obliterans organizing pneumonia, BOOP, is an inflammatory process that allows connective tissue, connective tissue to plug, uh, connective tissue plugs to form in the lower airways and the tissue between the alveoli. Suggested triggers are infectious processes, uh, drugs, um, like chemotherapy agents and antibiotics, especially the sulfur-based drugs, um, anti-seizure drugs, cocaine. Um, or the presence of another connective tissue disorder. The most effective treatment is going to be corticosteroid therapy. Tumors in the bronchial tubes can grow and obstruct the bronchus partially or completely. Tumors in other areas can obstruct the airway by compressing it. The most common primary lung cancers are bron bronchogenic carcinomas. The staging of lung cancer is going to be based on the TNM system. It is performed at the time of diagnosis to assess the size and the extent of the tumor. So they will look at that and it correlates to the survival rate for the for that cancer. Lung cancers happen as a result of repeated exposure to inhaled substances that cause chronic tissue irritation, inflammation, inflammation cigarette smoking, and other major risk factors. One of the biggest concerns about lung cancer is that by the time it manifests in the body, usually the manifestations are non-specific to the patient and they appear late in a disease depending on the type and location of the tumor. Lung lesions are usually going to be provided uh, identified on a chest x-ray or a CT scan. There are times that they will do a fiber optic bronchoscopy and to visualize the trachea and see what they're seeing down there. And when they do a bronchoscopy, sometimes they'll go ahead and send some specimen down, specimens down. Thank you for listening to this presentation. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on non-infectious lower airway respiratory disorders. For any questions about this lesson or about the corresponding notes that go with this lesson, please feel free to email me. Have a wonderful day.